Hi, my name is Herm, and I'm an application specialist with Onset Computer. Today I'd like to give you a demonstration of data logging software and show you what's possible in terms of working with your data. For the purposes of this demo, we'll be using Onset's Hoboware Pro data logging software, which is compatible with both PC and Macintosh computers. We'll run through the five main phases of using data logging software, including launching a data logger, data readout, graphing your data, data analysis, and some basic reporting capabilities. By the end of this webcast, you should have a solid understanding of how data logging software works and how it can help you make sense of your data. At this point, let's get right into the demo. First, we're going to look at what's called launching or starting the logger. Uh, this is the main screen in our Hoboware Pro software. And up here, if you follow my mouse cursor, you will see uh, a selection called device. We want to click on that and go to launch. Um, it's going to look for the any attached loggers, which we have at one of our loggers attached to it right now. This is the main launch window. This is where you would configure the logger for your particular application. Notice that it gives you the name or part number of the logger, the serial number, the number of times it has been used or deployed, and the battery level. Here in the description field, you can put in a unique description for your launch. Uh, right now we have data logger demo, which is a good, uh, a good label for that. You can also select the, the channels or the um, measurements that you want to make. This particular logger has the ability to measure temperature, relative humidity, and it also has a couple of external inputs. So today what we have is we have the temperature and the relative humidity selected and with no external inputs uh, installed, that's why these are points are not checked. We could also log the batteries, uh, the logger's battery voltage if we would like to. Today we're not going to do that. Below here, we, this is where we set up the interval. And what a logging interval is, is how often the logger takes a measurement. So today, uh, this actually defaulted to once a minute. We're going to change it to once a second, just so we can log a little data while we're talking, and then we can go back and look at it. All right, let's click on the right one. There we go. One a second. And you can see that underneath that, it says logging duration will be approximately six hours and one minute. Now below this box, we have our launch options. Launch options are when we want the logger to begin logging. The first selection, which is, which is selected in this, uh, in this demonstration, is, indicates that the logger is going to start immediately. We can also start it at an interval, which is the next selection below. What that means is we can, we can configure it to start and log at a particular time each time, like uh, exactly at 10 a.m., say. 10 a.m., 10.01, 10.02, etc. Delayed start is our next option down below. This is a very useful feature in that it will allow us to not only uh, set up the logger to automatically start at a future time, but it's also handy when deploying multiple loggers and uh, if you wish to synchronize the data, in other words, have them all start at the same time and then collate the data later from multiple loggers into one file, you can do it that way. So delayed start is very useful for that. Um, because the logger is connected to this PC, um, it is, its internal clock is synchronized with the PC clock. So if you launch all your loggers from the same PC, they will, uh, in essence, have exactly the same uh, time for starting and their, their clocks will all be synchronized. The other option for launching is a trigger start. And this particular logger has a little push button on the front. So if you say trigger, it will sit and wait to be launched until you push that button. Uh, and it, it, it waits indefinitely. Okay, so we have all our uh, launch parameters installed and uh, the logger is ready to be launched. Now, down here, we also have a status window. We can actually check the status of the sensors to see what they are, they are reading at this time. Uh, we can do that right now. If we click on that, we can see that the temperature sensor is reading 80 degrees because it's sitting on top of the computer, and the relative humidity is 40%. Um, the other measurements are inconsequential. They're grayed out because they haven't been selected. 
Uh, and the dew point, you can see that the dew point is automatically calculated from the temp and RH. The other information, it says how much memory has been used, what its status is, etc. Again, we have not launched the logger yet. Okay, if we are satisfied with the configuration here, we would click the launch screen, the launch button, and this launches the logger. The logger is now logging. So if we let this, uh, because we set this for a one second interval, we are collecting data uh, as we speak right now. If we decide, okay, we're, uh, we want to read this out, the next step is to use the readout selection. And that would be under device, we click on readout. Again, it's looking at the number of loggers connected because you can't have multiple loggers connected to one computer. It happens that this is the one that we launched. We click on OK. This gives us the uh, this window gives us the option to either stop the logger or not stop the logger and read it out. In the, for this, uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, we can stop it and we can read it out. The next window that opens is a um, a file save window. This allows you to save the data file that we just created over that, those just those few seconds that we were talking uh, to the um, folder of your choice, and that could be a network folder if this is a networked computer. For the purposes of this exercise, we will save this to the desktop. The next window is the plot setup window. Now, the plot setup window gives you the option to plot all of the channels that were selected in the launch or only specific channels. It doesn't change the data file at all. It just gives you the ability to look at uh, individual um, data plots or all of the data plots that are available. So that would be up here. You can check off, again, we measure temperature and relative humidity. Maybe we, we're interested in dew point, which is a calculated value, calculated from temp and RH. We're going to click on that to select it so we can see that as well. The other window under here is events. Um, what those are are there little tick marks on the display or on the graph that indicate when the logger was stopped and the end of the data file. Uh, there are also other events available. If you if you did a triggered start, it, that would be in indicated. You can also label the um, events in the um, during the during the um, deployment by pressing the trigger start button. But for this uh, purposes of this exercise, we won't display those. We'll click done and then we plot. Now, what we're looking at now is an XY graph of the deployment over those few seconds. Uh, basically, you have your, your time axis here. As you can see, it, we launched it at 1026 and uh, we offloaded it at 1027. The black solid line is the temperature. Again, it didn't change very much over that very short deployment. The blue is the relative humidity. And you can see that was changing, although not very much. If you looked at, look at the, um, the scale factor, it's only between 40 and 40.7. So it really didn't change a whole lot. One thing that Hoboware does is it will automatically scale your data to what it thinks is the best resolution for your application and I will show you how to change that in a moment. The dotted line is the dew point calculation, and that was calculated from the temp and the relative.